First of all, we think that creativity happens everywhere. The school's been open about um, 30 years. It was opened in the early 70s. It was initially conceived as a community school for the local housing estate, the Ferrier. The reason I came here was because it was a genuine comprehensive school. We have a fully diverse kind of intake, the support of parents, and it feels very much like a kind of primary school. It's on a small scale, it feels very intimate, and we have very good relationships between staff and pupils. We, we understand that teachers are, are multifaceted individuals with lives outside school and we need to try and incorporate all of the skills that they have. And particularly in, in science at the moment, we have uh, a few teachers experimenting with video to try and communicate some of the more difficult information, the more abstract information to students who might not necessarily understand it in traditional ways of, of teaching. And they're really keen to get to their lessons. They certainly are. <laughs> We've done all kinds of imaginative things and you see evidence of that around the building. So some of the kids that hate science are the ones that have been taught in a boring, monotonous way. Chalk and talk and book work doesn't help a lot of kids and it's a fact. The students that took part have, have loved every single bit of it and they can still relay the information that they learn as well which is fantastic. I'm Pat Teasley, I'm on top of series. I'm sodium, the next one down. I'm magnesium, the next one down. Aluminium and the next one down. Hi, I'm Zinc, and I'm the next one down. Hi, I'm Mercer. Hi, I'm the next one down. Hi, I'm T, and I'm the next one down. Hi, I'm Copper, I'm the next one down. Hi, I'm Silver, and I'm the lowest mill. The project started just post SATs with a year nine group who are, were bottom set. They had found certain scientific concepts really very difficult, and one of those was the reactivity series. The list of metals going from the most reactive to the least reactive, and the process by which a more reactive metal can displace a less reactive metal from its compound. So I turned them into characters. The um, metals were boys, the non-metals were girls, and the girlfriends would pick and choose and dump their boyfriends to go out with a more reactive one. Hi, we're the girls and we're the non-metals. I'm Silva, I think you're all buff. What's your name? I'm Roma, this is my boyfriend, Sodium. Will you go out of me? No way will I go out of you, you're nowhere near as buff as Sodium. I don't care, I'll find someone better. Ha ha, I'm lucky mate. I don't care, I didn't like her that much anyway. I'm the king of the world. <coughs> that serves you right trying to with someone else's girlfriend. Like in the textbook it's just all in your face, but doing this has made it much more easier. Potassium solids, stuff, sodium, lithium. So I had to learn poems about it and I'd forget the poems. Please send Lazy Charlie money all zoos in town, let children see gorillas. I got confused and what order they got in. When we done the puppet show, we kind of like was acting them as well, so we was putting them in order. So you learned at the same time what order they go in. The lower ones would be uglier and you like the higher ones would be more buffer. Have you got a boyfriend? Not in a bit, bitch, my dear. How about I take you to Mackie D's? I'll take you to Pizza Express. McDonald's is far too childish. I prefer Pizza Express. So I allowed about four hours, but actually they took about six to make and really finish off. But the kids were really fussy and they really wanted to perfect them. I got to make pom poms and hair. <laughs> this is sulfate, and then she's actually about 17, 18 years old, and she's um, qu quite posh and, and everything. Like, she has a really funny accent, and like, she talks to people, and she's been very attracting to other people. My favourite part of this project must be the making of and the acting of the puppets. The acting was quite funny. We started doing scripts, for, like writing about how the puppets could talk to each other. Some people started making theatre. And Miss came in with all different materials that we could add on. For sure, then. I think you're well off. Yuck, I'm not going out of you. You're not good looking like magnesium. <laughs> I've been rejected. That'll serve you right for trying it on with someone else's girlfriend. 
it's making it more physical um, for, for these sorts of kids. Learning from a textbook does nothing for them. They're not going to understand it from that. They can't see the particles, they can't see atoms, they can't play with them and hold them. This was one way that they could really show that, that these things move around and they inter interact with each other and, and what reactions really are. So we've turned reactions into relationships, we've turned it into something that is going on every day in the, in the playground. You, you don't need a text but, but to design a puppet and to do a show, everything you, you can just like do by hand and voice. Can I ask you a question? Would you go out with me? Oh, of course. Magnesium needs to sort himself out. I'm happy with potassium now. He's all mine. Hippie! I'm the king of the world. Some of them who find just speaking very, very difficult, when they're in character, they would find their own voice, find a voice for their character, and it was, it was amazing to watch. Hey, you're too kind, darling. I enjoyed it because it was um, quite funny and um, people were making silly voices. McDonald's is far too childish. I prefer Pizza Express. That they were completely engaged throughout and put so much effort into it. And it was really impressive. Thank you for watching and goodbye. The best way for them to learn it was to hold and touch and feel the characters and really get involved in the science. And then you decided to make this into a video? Initially it was just going to be a puppet show and then we decided that it would be a really good idea to document it. So parts of the process were, were filmed and also the end product was, was videoed as well. John did that. Very badly. So Very you were involved well. in this project? Yes, I mean, um, we were a specialist arts college at Thomas Towers and um, when Alex first suggested the, the project, um, uh, I tried to give it as much support as possible. Jenny, you were involved in this project as well. In what capacity? At the time, I worked in the speech and language department. Most of the kids that were in the unit were within Alex's class. The really good thing about this project was having Jenny in the classroom as well. She's an art and design teacher by trade, and um, so she could put loads into the, into the project as well. So I learned loads from Jenny. I wouldn't have been able to do it without her. I didn't know what the reactivity series was. <laughs> yeah, so, so we learned a lot of each we, other. We taught each other how yeah. to do it, wasn't we? So is this level of support quite common across the school? Yeah, I think we were unusually fortunate in this school in having lots of very talented people in lots of unusual places. And, um, and you find this talent popping up all over the place and we try to take full advantage of it. How would you describe the learning style that you presented to this group. There's a lot of kinesthetic stuff involved in that group and we, we tried to do that quite a lot, didn't we? Yeah, if the, you t mentioned metal, the metal was there for them to see. It wasn't an abstract theory or that class could not be taught through an abstract or open concept unless they can touch and play and interact. So it's breaking things down. It had to be done the whole way through the course to such a degree that it was taking the small little pegs that put the concept together and that's when they began to understand the process. The thing that I found most amazing about it was the, the kind of level of interpersonal sophistication that it brought out in the kids. I mean, when I came in early on and saw some of the initial discussions mm. that you were having, they were having real difficulty just kind of making eye contact with each other sometimes. Mm. And now, seeing them out on the concourse with a video camera and a boom mic, and wandering around negotiating very difficult things, mm. it's absolutely incredible prograss they've made, I think. He was grow like fruit and vegetables, well, mostly vegetables. And, um, and this is a um, garden. Um, These are Cara potatoes, which we're going to grow. Show you how we grow them. I'm going to plant them. Okay. If you want to come in here, duck your head. Because you're being serious. And some of the teachers that make you read out of books and wear this, you learn more about food. This. Oh, they're going to be beetroot. And, um, oh, I don't know what beetroot actually looks like. Well, basically, all the vegetables that we grow over there, but carried all the way to here and are used in the kitchen. 
and there's the food breaks from here and it goes off into the canteens. So basically we're just eating the vegetables that we grow ourselves. It was quite interesting to see how much they actually knew. I mean, it really. was quite risky, really, yeah. wasn't it? Getting those kids to all work together on su something that was such a team effort. But we ended up, it ended up working really, really well. They did, they worked well with each other and they, you know, they didn't want to let each other down either, which was quite a shock, really, because they probably would have tore the heads off each other. Yeah. <laughs> Or they would have had some sort of slagging session, you know, beforehand, yeah. and where that then they were interacting. It really didn't want to let the group down as a whole. So. But they ended up supporting each other so much that they would be saying, "Oh, come on, you can do it. Come on, don't don't be shy. Speak louder. Come on, you need to do this." And really helping each other. Yeah. And would you share the video that was made here with the rest of the staff in terms of their own professional development? Absolutely. I mean, all, all the films we've made so far, and we've made quite a few now, uh, documenting various things, they're all available on our website. We've, we've already commissioned uh, a team of designers to create a, a little area on our website that, that it's kind of like a, a YouTube for Thomas Tallis School. And, and kids and staff will have the opportunity to upload the video and sound files to that, and, and we'll have a kind of media gallery of all of this stuff. I think the biggest thing is I, I need to learn how to do it myself. I, I find it really scary. There's a lot of talk, I think, uh, about the digital divide, you know, the kids who have and the kids who don't. And, and it's my experience, certainly, that that digital divide exists amongst adults too, and it exists in our staff. And, and one of the things we have to work really hard to do is bridge the gap between those people who feel confident at using this kind of media and those who don't. And, and the most important thing for me at the moment is that the students are the ones with most of the skills. And we, we miss a trick when we don't include them as co-teachers and as co-learners with staff. No, I like the fact that it looks like a prison and it has a heart inside. Two <laughs> <laughs> comments? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So Alex, we know in your video that you had a couple of interviews. So all we're going to talk about is a couple of helpful hints about filming interviews. You might want to hold it yourself. But you're asking the questions, so the tendency is for the person you're asking the questions, your interviewee, to answer directly to you. And that means they're looking straight at the camera. Right. And that's very off-putting for the viewer. So what you can normally do is come around slightly with the camera to about here. And then your interviewee is talking to you, and then you'll find that your camera angle is much better. Thank you. OK, cool. The landscape is changing so rapidly that it's part of our professional responsibility to not just to keep up to date with things, but, but to try and understand the culture that comes along with that and to try and engage with that culture and not treat it as a kind of uh, a problem. Actually look at the potential advantages of using, for instance, you know, uh, mobile phones in classrooms as digital cameras and video cameras and encouraging students to edit clips and content uh, and then use them in a creative way to enhance their own learning.